Hello everybody. In today's video, I will show you how to use logical databases in HR for reporting. This allows the data of the infotypes or more precisely the transfer tables behind them, such as PA0001 for the organizational assignment to be read out with high performance. So I create a program and in this field LDB name, logical database name, I type PNP. So I click on save and I save this to a temporary package of mine. And then I click on save. So after that, I zoom in a little bit and then I go back to the properties of the program, go to attributes, and then we see here PNP HR master data. So then we can click on HR report category and we can pick if we want some different restrictions. For example, if I only want to pass the personal number, but in my example, we don't need this and we leave this empty. So then we start with the program code. First, we declare tables, pair and error, then info types, 0001 or info type one. So then I write here, get pair and error. With get pair and error, the internal tables of the info types declared with the info types statement are filled for each past personal number. And then I write here, the command provide. So provide star from info type one between some begin date and end date. And then I write out the personal number, the begin date and the end date. So after that, I activate the program and I run the program. So this is my, these are my input fields, my selection area. And here I can pass the personal number. And then I click on run. And we see we have 10 entries in the info type one for this personal number. So we go back. And we can pick some other periods, for example, the current year. And for this, I have only one record with this personal number. So let's go back in the code. Let's set a breakpoint here. Then we type here in the personal number, we run the program again. And in the, in the table P0001, there are always all entries of my info type. In this case, I have 10 entries with different periods. So we go on here. We press a five, a five for every loop, for every provide, and we see here our 10 entries. So now we can set some inputs directly in the code. For example, the personal number for this, we open the technical information with F1 and we see here the screen field. We copy this screen field name. Then we go back in the code. And here we type in PNP peer and error is value hashtag. And here we create an entry for range or for select options. So sign is include, option is equals and low is my personal number. And then append PNP pair and error, pretty print and activate. Oh, activate and run. So now we can run the program without input the parent error and we see it works because the parent error is passed in the code. 
Okay, and the same we can do with the begin date and end date. PN begin date and PN end date are these radio buttons. Then the date will be set or we can use a different selection period. Then we have to uh, use some other screen fields. Here, for example, PNP begin date. Okay, so now let's uh, read another info type 105. And the only thing we have to do is we write here star from P0105. And then we write the data out from the info type 105. So let's copy this and replace the info type 1 with info type 105. We activate and run the code. We see here uh, 20 entries. Here we see only the last two entries are filled with a personal number from the info type 105. Why? Let's check this in the debugger. So we run this again. And now let's double click on 1 and 105. We see here we have only one entry in the info type 105 with the begin date April 1st of April. And in the info type 1, we have 10 entries. And only um, yeah, with start date, the current one, start date 2014, October of 2014. So Now let's do another option to use the provide command for not the for not all fields, just for some fields. In this case, the personal number from the info type one one. And here we need an a flag. And this command bounds the begin date and the end date between the begin date and the end date which are passed in the input mask. So let's declare the flag. This is of type flag. And let's declare an internal table too, so that we can append the selected records to this internal table. So we append the records to the internal table here. Then we activate and run the code. Run the program. And now we click on the internal table. Here we see one entry and this is the whole valid interval of this info type from the year. 2007 to year 9999. Okay, so let's go back and let's read another info type. So we copy this provide fields command and here we read the personal number and the user ID from the info type 105. We need another flag and we declare the second flag and the second internal table. Pretty print and a little bit of formatting here. Okay, we have forgot to append this entries from the info type 105 to the internal table. So let's do this and run the code again. And now let's check the, these are the whole entries of the info types. Now check the internal tables. We have here two entries. Why? Because we have two valid entries for this interval in info type one. And 
we have, uh, if you go back to 105, here we have one uh, invalid entry, just the entry with April 1 is valid and here we have the personal number and if we go at the end of the table we see the user type of this valid entry. Okay. So if we check the same with a different selection period, for example, 1st of May 2024, here we know that we have two valid entries in info type 1 and info type 105. And now we should see only one record in every internal table. So let's double click here on. Okay, let's check the date first. Yes, it's 1st of me, my. And then the internal table is one record in info type 1 and info type 105. So because the valid interval is after May 1. And these are two valid entries in info type 1 and 105. Now let's add some and try and catch block for some exceptions. First exception is interval overlap because this is not allowed because we have a time bound here. So the internal tables are usually processed with loops However, the internal tables of the info types have properties that enable special processing. The entries are defined as time dependent. This makes it possible to read several info types together in relation to a time period. So, and apart from the key entries such as client, personal number, subtype, object ID, log indicator, valid period and sequence number, the PA tables only contain the data of the respective info type. It's a bit, a bit complicated, so you have to test this with different um, time interval intervals or time periods by your own. Yes, at the end, as always, don't forget to subscribe, give me a thumbs up and write something in the comments. Take care and see you in the next video.